Hey guys, welcome back to Celta Helper TV. I've got another great episode for you today, this time with a Celta trainer, Matthew, who's over in China, and we caught up online to have a quick chat and get some in-depth insights from him and his experience as a Celta trainer to share with you guys to help you on your Celta journeys. So stick around, it's going to be good. Uh, as always, you can click the timings below if you need to skip a little bit, if you're in a bit of a rush. If you want to also just scroll through on the bar, you should see the questions below our conversation. So you can do that quite quickly. And if you enjoy the video, give us a like and a subscribe. If you want to not miss out on the next video, click the bell notification below so you get notified direct to your devices. And hopefully you enjoy. Any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. So enjoy and I hope you get a lot from it. Hello, Matthew. Um, welcome to this chat. So to get us started, could you tell us about yourself and your background? Great. Uh, sure. My name is Matthew Armstrong. I work in China and Beijing, and I've been teaching here for a little over six years. Um, I got into teacher training, and um, I started working at a center that offers CELTA because I wanted to become a CELTA trainer. Uh, that's what I'm doing basically now, and I've been doing it nonstop one month after the next for the last two and a half years. Okay, great. Okay, so two and a half years as a trainer. Oh, brilliant. So you've been through quite a few CELTA courses now then as a trainer. Yes, somewhere around um, 20. <laughs> wow, that's a, that sounds quite intense, <laughs> even as a trainer. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes when it's uh, Friday, you finish, and then Monday, you start up a new one. It's... <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Well, that's... He's still waiting for the assessor to to kind of confirm the grades from the last course, then the next one's starting. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, that sounds interesting from the other end. I've never really thought of it like that, but wow. Okay. <laughs> um, so then I wanted to um, obviously get your insight on when you were actually studying on the CELTA course, and... I wanted to yeah. ask, what do you remember most about your CELTA course as a CELTA trainee or student? Um, I just remember I hated, I really, I was teaching kids and I probably shouldn't have been teaching kids. And I was more interested in learning Chinese and staying here longer in China and learning uh, the language. I started to take it because my friend uh, wanted to take it and uh, he was saying he was bad at grammar so I just took it uh, because of his recommendation and then I found that it because I love languages and learning languages it, it blew my mind uh, on the self I just kept finding I was at a, some new level of awareness with learning how to make the classroom more engaging because I've had a lot of language lessons myself but none of them involved group work and working with your partner and peer checking and clarifying language in such a structured way that made sense rather than just translating everything and um, mm. I suppose it was just uh, I kept getting thinking I understood everything and then suddenly that was taken away from me and I suddenly realized I was at this new level and I kept learning something else um, when I I thought I was doing something how the, the trainers wanted me to do it, like uh, some kind of learner-centered matching or something. And uh, I did it, and it didn't make any sense. No, I didn't understand it until the feedback. For example, I did some kind of guided discovery, and I had it was consolidating the future forms, like the reasons why you would use um, present continuous for the future or or future simple for uh, the future or be going to for the future and mm. so I made this little matching thing like present continuous is for um, arrangements be going to is for plans you decide you decide in the past it's just matching that the students ask me questions and when they ask me questions I couldn't answer <laughs> and then I used the word plan and arrangement wrong and uh, the class went to hell <laughs> And then the, t the tutor said, I know you're angry, but just think why it went like that. There was just one reason, and I couldn't think of the reason at the time. 
And the reason was is I made that student-centered matching activity, but I didn't give them anything to work with. I, I should have given them a paragraph with example mm -hmm. sentences, like some context there, and then they could figure it out themselves. So I guess what I learned the most was to give students the tools to figure things out rather than relying on myself to do it. Right. Yeah, yeah, that is... I, re I remember having similar feelings and I also you know like you I love learning languages I did my undergraduate degree in Spanish and French and I did the the CELTA immediately after finishing and it was it was funny because I had these moments of reflecting on <laughs> so many seminars at university the conversation would just not flow and it was so awkward and maybe it was only a small group of us like Spanish conversation French conversation and the conversation would consistently run dry and like looking back, I was like, ah, oh, I can't believe they didn't do it more in this way, you know, and it was just, <laughs> uh, it's, it's hard to be in a language classroom now for like a foreign language, because it doesn't seem many of them have that kind of similar approach. And you end up, I don't know, sort of, yeah, grammar translation type territory or. Yeah, I agree. I had a, I had a German class that was like that, but at the time I didn't know any better. I, mm. I was, uh. I guess the grammar kind of guy, so I knew the grammar well, but everybody else is more fluent. So they put me in pair work and then I couldn't talk. So I found it miserable. But in Spanish class, they didn't have pair work and I was excelling because I was really fluent in it. It was awkward. I didn't really appreciate what they did in my German class until years later after the fact. Yeah, for sure. Oh, it's yeah, it, it, it's an insight. It's really hard to go back into a language classroom now, isn't it? Especially <laughs> with your position at the moment. <laughs> you just spend your yeah, whole time even, critiquing. Uh, <laughs> even one to one, I think it would be really difficult to to do that and sit down. But I do have um the guy who trained me to be a salted tutor. He um I was kind of doing an exchange with him while he was training me to do this. I, I was helping him with Chinese and he's British. And uh, he says that he's never had, he says those were the best classes ever. And I guess he said it was because I was teaching him exactly what he wanted to know. But I thought the classes were crap. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's really experienced too. And I, I felt like it was nothing but uh, uh, translation, kind of connecting the dots for him. But maybe it's because I engaged him with the, the content. It's really... I see. I'm still confused by it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and no pressure, had to right? Make the customer help. Had to make the customer happy, and <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. there's a large part of that, isn't it? So I was going to ask you then also. Maybe you've kind of touched on it. Um, again, as you're doing your time on the Celta course, what was the best bit of advice you received? Oh, um, I suppose I still find myself saying this to this day, and nobody. <laughs> takes heed of it as I tell them to uh, not try to get a specific grade on the, on the CELTA, just try to think about the students and all the ways you can help them instead, and it puts the focus off of everything, but uh, no one ever listens. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone always, uh, I mean, they're on the course of doing it for themselves, basically, not for the kind of frequent flyers who are taking the CELTA as students again and again and you know a lot of the the students on salsa courses they kind of do it again and again and really? they kind of trained well <laughs> um i suppose that's the best piece of advice or uh that's clarifying meaning before you start drilling or checking after you teach check that they understand what you're doing and that's especially true with young learners because if you find yourself teaching kids they can really roll with it just and it's really believable that they understand but you really don't know unless you really check that they understand yeah. what's happening yeah and it comes to that critical point later on and it all falls apart it's all a facade yeah they um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so adults, they've got to have that exact translation. They're uncomfortable with fuzziness, but children, they only hear what they understand. Yeah. And the adults only listen to what they don't understand, it seems, and get demotivated. I suppose it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember from my trainers that they were saying, you know, you never ask something like, do you understand? Because if you're the only person who doesn't, you're never going to put your hand up in that room great and um <laughs> that also goes for um 
what does X mean? Like, what does what does table mean? Because um, you got to explain table. It's ten table times is more a words. Piece of furniture that, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it um, involves using a relative clause grammar that's more complicated than the word that you're actually trying to teach. Oh yeah. Or uh, if you're trying to check understanding, some things don't need check in. Like if it's really obvious, an elephant, is it big? Is it gray? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, goodness me. Okay. So uh, maybe this was a bit of a tricky question then. Um, did you receive any advice on or during your CELTA course that was not helpful? And if so, what was it? Yeah. So um, I guess the advice I was getting was that, uh, or I felt everyone was giving me is that um, the confidence or the years of experience that you've been teaching matters. And uh, I found that there was a girl on that course who had no teaching experience. She even said that she felt like she was going to puke. And she was a non-native speaker, and she actually did really well on the course. Mm. Um, so a lot of the times, the people who have experience, like it's confidence, but it's not competence. That, And then they're unlearning a lot of things. Uh, I can't think of particularly any kind of bad advice I got, but... I, I, it felt like there were a lot of ideas out there that were yet to be confirmed. Right. Um, not sure uh, if I answered your question, but no, I no, that's good. <laughs> well, it's funny yeah. because I'm I'm often saying on on the blog, you know, that it's it's not all about experience because sometimes I think the more experienced teachers have a harder time, like you said, unlearning things, maybe bad habits they've picked up, and for them, then it's a bit more of a um, sort of. They need that paradigm shift, whereas the people coming in blank, they can just take what's given to them and roll with it. Whereas some of those guys, it causes them, you know, uh, it shakes them to their foundations because they're thinking, yeah. all my previous teaching's been wrong. I have to change now. And so I think, oh, yeah, no yeah, experience yeah. can be actually beneficial in several ways, can't it? And so the next one then uh, I wanted to ask you actually, what would you say to someone who's just finished a CELTA course and is looking for experience, perhaps that first job? On my CELTA, the assess, you know, in the third or fourth week, uh, an assessor comes to the course and uh, the assessor, you're supposed to be able to knock on the door and uh, go in and talk to the assessor. I found out later my friend on the course wanted to go and grieve to the assessor about something but couldn't because I went in there and started talking to him so I went in there and asked the assessor for some advice and he says um whatever I do when I leave I need to make sure that I go someplace where there's somebody more experienced than me who is going to work with me in some way as in CELTA is supposed to kind of raise awareness about how bad you are at everything <laughs> <laughs> or or make you realize that there's a need for continual professional development. Hmm. Um, it's not about how bad you are or good you are. So, uh, sure, you get a pass, pass B, pass A. That's supposed to only be relevant for the first six months when you leave. But you're supposed to have somebody, even if you're pass A, to help you a bit, guide you in the right direction um, when you go someplace to work. Like the training is not supposed to stop after CELTA or the self-development is not. Um, yeah. So I suppose make sure you go someplace where they have realistic expectations about teaching. Uh, there's some, uh, somebody there who has ideally their CELTA holders there or ideally somebody has a, a diploma level qualification like DIPTESOL or Trinity DIPTESOL or DELTA. Um, and uh, I, the other advice for uh, say no to nothing, as in they come to you and say, all right, you're, we have a class of 36 year olds and we need you to teach that class, that 30, uh, 30 kindergartners. You're supposed to say yes, and then panic later, or you get an IELTS <laughs> lesson, an uh, IELTS class, or you get uh, English for specific purposes. You're going to teach uh, a lawyer English so mm. say yes to that and then panic later and figure it out so the first 18 months after the course you try to you work with how make sure there's someone around you that like uh, uh, who knows more than you and you can uh, 
rely on them, network with others, and don't say no to things. Get nice breadth of experience before you try to specialize in anything. <laughs> okay, that, that's funny because like my first couple of jobs, I remember I never had a choice. I was <laughs> I'd be going from like four year olds to fifty year old one on one. <laughs> it was just. You know, it's a bit crazy, but yeah, it was all good experience. Oh, one okay, on, so. yeah, one on ones is a specialism, and teaching young learners is a specialism. So put them both together. You know, I haven't really done much one on ones, and I still don't feel too comfortable with it. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's all good experience. Okay, great. And can I ask? Uh, this one's on the fly, obviously. Um, I, as I think I mentioned in our chat before this, that I have quite a lot of people who are non-native speakers mm -hmm. who read the blog and they're often asking me about jobs i was just wondering do you encounter many non-native speakers who teach english in china <clears throat> yeah and um who are not obviously chinese there are people here i'm not sure why they're here um i've met some um it's usually because they're able to teach some kind of specialized content area like physics or some uh, advanced math okay. or something like that with English. Um, yeah, so it's that sort of combination of skills that makes them yeah. able to get the foot in the door. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm talking I about like AP level subjects and or even, uh, yeah, it was physics and really <laughs> complex things like that. And uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like it seems like the need for that kind of skilled teacher is so high that it sometimes it doesn't matter where you come from uh, and i know that there's some schools that are a little bit more open about where you come from uh than others if you ask me yeah, then because... i don't know if i could give you answers immediately <laughs> no that's yeah. that's fine i mean obviously i'm asking you that one on the fly so no that was cool that was great now i just i know i have seen some um let's say questionable job adverts <laughs> from places like China in the past, which I've been posted on Facebook and yeah. Um, I've, yeah, I've had to hire nice, for yeah. them too and it was very demoralizing and I felt bad myself. I found myself having to to do it and uh, yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I actually, I was contacted by a couple of agents. I think they got me through, found me through LinkedIn maybe or was it Facebook and they were recruitment agents for Chinese schools and they basically said, "Yeah, can you find us a teacher?" And they offered me some, you know, finders fee, and I was interested. And then I said, "Look, do you base? I can't remember how I worded it, but uh, is anyone okay?" And they said, "Oh, we prefer white skin or something like that." And I was like, "Okay, see you later." Yeah, <laughs> nah. That is. Um, I mean, obviously that's only two people, but it's still quite worrying. But there was one time. Uh, well, it is what they think that the customer will want, and I think mm, that they found yeah. that the customer can be really, really flexible. Um, usually, people are teaching kids when they come over here. Most of the time, I think, not yeah. necessarily, but um, they think that the parents want to accept teachers who are a uh, different color besides mine. And uh, it turns out that they're perfectly fine with that. They're often they're just curious, and then after that, it's perfectly fine. Um, mm. There was one guy who was working with us. He was pretty big, and and I think people found him uh, scary, but I think that was more prejudice than anything else. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, the, there was one guy. He had um, a kind of Pakistani or Indian kind of, or not as hard, bad to ge of me to generalize like that. South Asian, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, uh, he had parentage uh from around there and they uh grew up he was from london but he doesn't sound like he's from downton abbey and um <laughs> and i uh, helped him get this job somewhere then they said no it was like, his skin color and he didn't sound british they said but he was born and <laughs> raised in london it was really weird i don't want to discourage anybody you just have to be careful with uh uh who you contact um uh, I guess yeah. recruitment agencies, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm sure. I know there are jobs out there. It's just, um, it's obviously good to try and read into the job advert, isn't it, to see what kind of an <laughs> organization you're going into. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, okay. So, then kind of coming back to the script, uh, um, you said obviously you've been a CELTA tutor for about two and a half years. 
could you explain a Celta tutor? Right. So, um, you've got to, uh, however you do this, you get and you do a Delta or you do the Trinity Dip Tiesel. These are level seven qualifications. Um, you need that and at least five years of teaching experience. And it's supposed, ideally, it's varied as in mainly teaching a adults but varied doing a range of different things range of different classes in a range of different contexts uh mine was kind of half young learners half adults mainly in china uh, that was acceptable five uh about five years of experience uh they don't want to know about anything like celta or anything so they're just interested in my dip tiesel that i took and i took it a year maybe a year before i got to be a salsa tutor so basically you need to be in the right place at the right time as in mm. at the right time means you're ready for it that means you have your delta or dip tiesel and your experience and the center that you're at has a course that's coming and someone has time to train you that's what i mean about time right place means yeah. You have to be at a place that happens to have a CELTA center. And uh, the center needs to, it can't just train you for the fun of it. Cambridge has to see evidence that you're going to be there um, ongoingly as like part of the staff there. They don't want more CELTA freelancers. They want people who are going to be at CELTA centers. (coughs) So... That's called Celta, That's called nomination, getting nominated as a Celta tutor. So I was working at Language Link in Beijing. Uh, they're often l- looking for uh, teachers, by the way. <laughs> Language Link Beijing. Anyways. Okay, yeah, maybe I'll put a link below. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so, um, anyways, uh, so I was there, and I had to get management to agree to this. They had to pull me out of other programs I was involved with. That's another thing. You have to be at the right place at the right time. Um, so, uh, then they have to fill in this paperwork to nominate me as a CELTA tutor or for training. They send that in, it gets approved. I think it took over a week to do that. They say yes. And they have to, my, the, the tutor who train trains you needs to send in a proposed training regimen which means that you're going to be observing probably at least 80% of the course. So I watched all of the input sessions. Mm. So it was like I was a trainee on the course almost, like taking the course, but I was observing it. Yeah, I was getting the Celta tutors materials, watching what the tutor's doing, watching the activities, how the tutor responded to things. I was journaling. And um, I also... So that's just one part. The other part of the day was the f- teaching practice. So I had to sit down and get into the rhythm of writing all of that feedback. And uh, for the first two weeks, I wrote feedback after feedback. And no one saw that feedback besides my tutor who was training me. And he was giving me all kinds of feedback about my feedback. And it was frustrating because the trainees never read my feedback, therefore never did what I wanted them to do. But was doing what the other tutor was telling them to do. Then in the third week, I had to start uh, practicing giving feedback to them, which was very scary <laughs> because the people you're <laughs> taking, uh, there were 18 people on this course, and they saw me as in the same boat with them. Like, <laughs> like I'm on this course too with them, and I'm being trained in some way. Um, but they would. So you're like a double agent <laughs> yeah. there lurking in yeah, the background. They, <laughs> I felt like um, <clears throat> I guess I was one of them in the Seltzer Tutors. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like undercover, you'd become part of the group. Um, yeah. So and then you had to break rank. <laughs> yeah. So I had to start giving feedback because uh, in the third week, and that was a little weird because there'd be another tutor in the background and you'd be giving feedback, and then you'd. you'd it's like you know a lot, but you don't know what to shut off and what not to tell them because you need to only tell them what makes sense in that specific moment. If you tell them too much information and it's not practical enough, it's useless. So I found that really difficult. 
anyways, in the when you're、mm. doing this kind of training, you're preparing to do the role, right? You also have to watch standardization videos online. There are seven of them, I think, on this、uh, platform called Fronter. You also use Fronter when you take the online Salta. By the way, that's where the input materials are.、Um, okay. So, and then in the third or fourth week, when the assessor comes, oh, so when the assessor comes, the assessor assesses the course for one day and then stays another full day just for you. Um, so before that、wow. day, you also do a few input sessions, and those are weird because there's another tutor sitting somewhere watching you, <laughs> and you don't have time to prepare <laughs> for this input session either because you're so busy with everything else. It's like you're busier, you're more busy than the Celta trainees, it seems, and you have to be marking the assignments, and you don't know what. Kind of feedback is decent or too much or too little, and then it takes、okay. a while to get right. Anyways, when the assessor comes, you have to do an input session. The assessor watches you do an input session. When I did mine, there was this American guy who was shooting spitballs at somebody's head, trying to shoot it onto his bald spot on his. I was thinking, really?、Um, all right, that was an <laughs> awkward moment in my、uh, training. So, anyways, I did mine on connected speech. Completely blew their minds.、Uh, the assessor gives you some feedback about what to do、uh, in input sessions, and then they fill in their paperwork. And then the assessor also watches you.、Uh, you get the teaching practice group, and you write their feedback, and then you give them feedback.、And、then the assessor gives you feedback later. And then shares that with the tutor who's training you, and then they write a report to Cambridge, and you also write this kind of reflective thing at the end. And then, two weeks after the course, Cambridge says, "Okay, you can become a Celta tutor, but we need to see evidence that you will be doing this or how you will be getting better at this because the assessor said you need to work on this." And then the、uh, right. Celta Center says、uh, the tutor who's training you gives them another、uh, plan of action, like he's going to be observing this and doing that. And then they instantly confirm and say, "Yes, you are an assistant course tutor. You need to do this for three or four months before you can be the main course tutor." And the only kind of Evidence that you got that your saltitude is this PDF document that says、uh, "dear," <laughs> and then it has the salt like the course administrator's name that says "dear,"、uh, and then it says we are happy to confirm that Matthew Armstrong is now a. <laughs> That's the only kind of proof you've got, and they otherwise, if somebody wants to know, they'd have to email Cambridge to find out.、Uh, so that's the、oh, wow. whole process. It is lengthy. And there are lots of people are probably more qualified when I、uh, like, not immediately around me, but you really have to be at the right place at the right time for this to happen.、Um, the people who are there are lots of wonderful Celta tutors, but I think that a lot of people who probably should be Celta tutors just don't get an opportunity because right place and right time kind of thing. Right, yeah. So I'm guessing also that it's almost always the people who are. Already working in an institution, then, yeah, it? it's pretty. I guess it's pretty much impossible from the、right. outside. Who's who's done the delta? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I see. Okay, oh, that's great. So there's a lot of steps there to think about for people who are watching who want to do it. But it's definitely doable if you can find your opportunity, right? Yeah. Um, I think probably, I think somewhere in East Asia would probably be the. If you wanted to do this long term, when I did my Celta, that's immediately what I wanted to do, and I actually did it amazingly.、Um, but I think somewhere out in the east, maybe it seems like this is the wild west of Celta centers opening up.、Uh, it might be easier to come and do it out here, whereas Celta has been kind of run for a long time in Europe, especially in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh great! All right then.、Um, so I suppose I was just going to ask you one more thing then to round、yeah. off.、Um, what kinds of sort of projects and work have you been doing recently that you'd like to share with the viewers? Oh, so、um, I've been working a bit with.、Uh, I just started doing Salt P and S. That's、uh, 
like uh, for primary level students and secondary level students because the uh, Young Learner Extension Certificate to SALTA has, was discontinued. So now they have SALT-P and SALT-S. Um, been doing that online and doing more online work. And I'm trying to get a blog going and uh, one mm. day offer materials and courses there. Um, it's called Sound Practice ELT. Uh, sound Practice because... I made a um, I made an online uh, YouTube a 14 video course on using on uh, learning the phonemic script. It's not it did very well, but I think you can learn a lot from that. Um, okay, I'll get a link to that then in the description right, for the video and, um, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it started with that course in mind, but sound practice is in not just pronunciation practice, but maybe good practice with English language teaching. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll have to check that out and share it with the viewers then. Great. Sounds good. And um, so, you, yeah, you said you got the blog going, and I'm guessing you're keeping that going for the foreseeable. Is that for people just getting into English language teaching, or is it CELTA specific stuff in general? Did you say? Oh, it's sorry, Sound Practice ELT. Right? Yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, making, I'm trying to make it applicable to people who uh, are both interested in taking CELTA or after CELTA English language teaching in general, not take this and run with the activity and just use it in class, but makes you think about what you're doing. Um, I try to write things that are just long enough to kind of read on your phone on your commute in the yeah. morning or something like that. Okay, great. Again, I, yeah, as I said, I'll check the link down below so people can check that out. So, right. <laughs> so well, good luck with that. Um, thank you. I'll, I'll round off then here. So thank you very much for your time and all your useful <laughs> insights. I know the audience and the viewers are getting a lot from this. So much appreciated. And uh, yeah, best of luck with all your projects and work in the future. Great. Thanks. It was a pleasure. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, Matthew. Mm -hmm. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. So there you go. A nice interview with Matthew there, the CELTA trainer who works in China. Lots of great insights. I'm sure you'll agree. And as mentioned throughout the video, all the links we talked about are in the description below this video. Remember to hit subscribe to get more videos from Celta Helper TV. Also hit the like if you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment with any questions. And if you want to go one step further on the subscription, get the click the bell notification so you don't miss any future uploads. So hope that was useful for you on your Celta journeys and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.